It has been a long while since I talked about Genshin's overall game design, mostly because I felt like I've talked about everything there is to talk about with the game. Fantastic potential, a digestible yet expandable foundation that can add a ton of layers above and as demonstrated countless times, and very compelling characters and world building squandered away by short-sighted surface level gameplay experiences with a mountain of questionable business decisions. That about sums up my sentiment with Genshin. It's a game that had, and still has, so much potential to be one of the best action RPGs ever made, making it all the more aggravating to see that potential wasted. I think a lot of that stems from the possibility that Mihoyo may have forgotten about what Genshin Impact is first and foremost, a game. Doubtless you're aware of the prevailing idea that the game has felt more like a glorified visual novel than an actual video game as of late, with tediously long unskippable cutscenes where characters stand idly and dump exposition or honestly more often than not pointless dialogue that has no bearing on the story whatsoever. And look, I'm all for a good story, no disrespect to anyone who finds the lore and characters to be the strong point of the game, but I stand by the belief that its producers have forgotten, above all else, beyond all nuance and no matter the perspective, Genshin Impact is a video game. The cardinal experience of any video game, regardless of genre or device through which is played, is that there's a starting point, an end point, whether physical or metaphorical, and a series of objectives that the player must, or at least is expected to complete as they progress from the beginning to the end. That is the basic principle of the video game experience. However, a concept that was emphasized a lot when I went to school for game design is the ultimate paradox of video games. All players have two goals, to complete the game and to have fun playing the game. Why this is a paradox is that by achieving one goal, you forfeit the ability to achieve the other. If you want to have fun playing the game, you have to continue playing it, but that means you won't be completing the game. If you want to complete the game though, you no longer have fun playing it because the game is over. The closest we've gotten to figuring out a win-win is by making games endless, to not have a fixed endpoint, instead to have milestones for players to achieve that can serve as ephemeral or fragmented completions of the game before they move on to the next, in essence putting more focus on the objectives in between the start and end point, journey over destination and all that. That is why so many popular video games are service-based, constantly updating the players with new content to create new start and end points to undergo, while allowing them to enjoy the game for an indefinite period of time. This is achieved by tapping into one aspect of game psychology that affects literally every person on the planet who's ever played a video game in their life. Progression The single most important driving factor of a player's enjoyment of a video game is progression. Tangible, discernible evidence that you're moving closer to your goals, whatever they may be. And this is where I feel like Genshin has forgotten that it is, first and foremost, a game. Content-wise, Mihoyo goes above and beyond, certainly far more than any other gacha developer I've seen before. The sheer amount of detail and time they put into stuff like the overworld terrain will never cease to amaze me, whether it's Honkai 3rd, Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, or the upcoming Xenon Stone Zero. It's no surprise we have tons of rival developers trying to emulate their style like Tower of Fantasy and Wuthering Wakes, but as I talked about in my Burnout episode, which I highly recommend you check out if you haven't yet, you can't create a satisfying experience by just throwing content at the player. Too much of the same content or too much of the wrong type of content is just as bad as not giving any content at all. I touched on this very briefly at the end of that video but wanted to make a more standalone episode on this. I would argue, right now, the biggest problem with Genshin Impact that's not only causing players to lose interest in it but making it difficult for new players to replace the ones who leave is that there's no sense of progression in more ways than just gameplay. Before talking about that, let's briefly cover the story issue with the game. A sore spot people have with Mihoyo when it comes to storytelling in Genshin is that the majority of those unskippable cutscenes or story-related sequences have no lasting permanence overall. They exist as isolated instances, never to be talked about again, which is why I alluded to most of version 3's later updates coming off as filler episodes in an anime. It's cool to see crossovers like Yula, Klee, and Kaya being able to interact with Kokomi, or Yaimiko taking a trip to Sumeru, or Shinto, Albedo, and Venti's drunk-ass vacationing to Inazuma. But as pointed out by this one comment, none of those filler episodes advance the plot at all. The world doesn't expand, characters stay the same. Nothing of lasting value is added to the game's overall storytelling, which is a fancy way of saying there's no progression, even from a narrative standpoint. I often forget the Traveler's original goal of reuniting with their siblings since 90% of the time it's just them living a slice of life isekai anime. I'm not saying everything that transpires in Tevat has to be connected to the Traveler's own ambitions, but there has to be some semblance of continuity for these quote unquote fillers. Version 2's Lantern Rite was, in my opinion, the best of the three, as it oversaw the reconstruction of the Jade Chamber, which you can still access long after the event has ended. Chasm, Enkonomiya, Dragonspine, they all had temporary events associated with them that are no longer present, but the areas are still there after the fact, which were excellent for fleshing out the parts of Tevat that were significant, yet unrelated to the main Archon questline. Those are the types of filler events that had tangible progression to them. The reason players were unsatisfied with version 3 content was that almost none of them had that kind of lasting impact on the game, if at all. 
Now narrative progression just so happens to be closely intertwined with gameplay progression due to how this game was designed to be a continuous story arc from one region to the next, bringing me to the real part of progression that Kenshin has neglected for far too long. Let's recap. In the past 3 years now, going on 4, we've had new regions, new characters, new enemies, a new event even, and yet I can't shake the feeling that Genshin feels exactly the same as it did back in version 1. Why? Because it is. An unfortunate but perhaps necessary outcome of continuously updating games is power and or feature creep. Power creep denotes an occurrence where successive updates or expansions to a game introduce more powerful content that leaves existing ones underpowered and therefore obsolete. A basic example of this would be Kokomi, who is by all accounts infinitely superior to Barbara in every conceivable way. Feature creep denotes the tendency of a design project, in this case a game, to accumulate more and more features or details that can lead to games becoming overly complicated and more difficult for players, especially new ones, to pick up. In the eyes of many, both power and feature creep have negative connotations to them, but in some ways they are a necessary evil to maintain player retention, as it ties back to progression and the paradox of simultaneously wanting to complete the game while enjoying it for as long as possible. Players naturally get bored of stuff after a certain point. To keep them attached to the game, developers introduce new content that moves the goalposts, incentivizing players to continue playing to reach the new points. Genshin has received no such thing. Every single piece of new content added to this game falls within the same scope as day one content. Not to say the game hasn't been power crept whatsoever, I think we can all agree teams are outputting way more damage now than ever before. But there hasn't been any expansion on the game's overall progression system, which is a core experience of any role-playing game. We're entering year 4, and characters are still capped at level 90, they still have 5 artifacts with the same stat formulas, weapons are still capped at 90 and still fall within the same structure in spite of their increasingly longer passive descriptions, talents are still basic attack, elemental skill, elemental burst, ascension passive 1 and 2, and an overall passive. I guess the only open-ended form of expression were constellations. Absolutely nothing has been added, improved, or expanded upon for over 3 years. To some, this may be seen as a good thing, as it means once you finish building a character, they're set for life. It keeps everything low maintenance, which adheres to those who want to play the game more casually. That's a perfectly valid point. But why continuously adding to progression is so important is that it influences one's motivation to do just about anything in the game. With no evolving progression system, anything and everything in Genshin falls under the same boundaries, leading to feelings of monotony and redundancy no matter how creative you try to be, and Mihoyo is nothing if not creative. All of their events, from an individual standpoint, are novel and unique, from character interactions to minigames and whatnot. We've had the Lantern Rite event three times over, and every time, it was different in some way shape or form, as opposed to other games who tend to just do copy-paste reruns of older events. However, as explained in the Burnout video, a measurable portion of the player base writes them off as yet another festival or holiday event since the base game has been the same for this entire time, undermining the significance of said events for the simple reason that nothing has changed. The Traveler, who is supposed to be an extension of us and our accounts, doesn't feel like they have grown or become stronger from the 2021 Land and Red event to the 2022 one to the 2023 one. It feels like we're doing the same exact things we were doing before and for the same reasons. Every version has a flagship event. Said flagship event is made significant by the special rewards they offer, namely the Crowns of Insight. During the first year of the game, players made absolutely sure not to miss a single crown of insight as there were so few of them back then and they wanted to make their characters stronger. In other words, they wanted to progress. Fast forward to version 4, and the event rewards are pretty much the same as they've always been, only by this point most if not all of us who started in version 1 or even version 2 have finished upgrading the characters we wanted to and still have plenty of resources in the bank. So, there's no need to participate in flagship events as they offer nothing of import, and they can't offer anything of import because there's nothing new to work towards. It's like a burger, you can change the toppings all you want, you can try all kinds of different buns, you can try different cuts of meat, you can try different sauces, different cheeses, different vegetables, but ultimately it's still a burger. That's kind of how new content quote unquote feels, it's just a different take on the same thing, hence why despite no two flagship events being the same, they feel like it. The only way to truly differentiate one event from another is through incentives, like hypothetically what would make version 4's to write different from version 3's or version 2's, because we could say in that same version we got a new expansion to allow characters to ascend to level 100 and unlock a second elemental skill, but to get that elemental skill you need a special item, a crown of awakening for the sake of argument. The thing about progression is that it's valued by everyone. Regardless of who you are, whether a casual player who only comes on for 15 minutes a day or a turbo slutty gamer who does 24 hour streams playing Genshin, progression applies to every demographic of players since that's the natural experience of video games, to progress, to complete, to be further ahead today than you were yesterday. The universal form of progression in RPGs is character progression, leveling them up, upgrading equipment, improving their skills, stuff like that. There hasn't been any expansion on this ever since the day the game came out. Like any other game, Genshin Impact must allow the player to progress, not just in world exploration, not just in storytelling, but in characters as well. 
that is the biggest influence for wanting to play a video game. Without progression, the game stagnates. Players want a challenge. They want the next big thing to work towards. It doesn't matter how many new characters you throw at us if the game is stuck in the same spot. That's why MiHoYo makes character-specific ascension materials to artificially give a reason for players to explore and unlock new areas. Without them, pragmatically, there's no reason you'd ever want to explore a pocket or corner of the map, would you? But say retroactively, version 4 introduces a double team system that lets you have two units active at a time, but to get that you have to complete the Archon quest of Fontaine. That is a legitimate reason for any player of any demographic to go to Fontaine and get the quest done, where some may not have otherwise if that double team system didn't exist. Also, it doesn't necessarily have to require making a character explicitly stronger either. Take the Oculi for example. Back in Mustad in the UA, you had an actual purpose to go after every single one of those godforsaken orbs because obtaining all of them would increase your maximum stamina. But the Inazuma, Sumeru, and now Fontaine Oculi don't give you anything beyond region sigils, Stella Fortuna for the Traveler who isn't even a good unit most of the time, some Primo Gems, and Shrine of Death Keys. What do region sigils buy? Ascension materials, Mora, and furniture that hardly anyone cares about. Materials and Mora are things you can easily get through other means. What is contained in Shrine of Dead Chests? Mora, sigils, useless artifacts, useless weapons, a token amount of primo gems, and that's about it. Once again, all things you can easily get elsewhere. But there was no way you can increase stamina outside of Animoculus and Geoculus, so everyone was equally incentivized to get them. Increasing stamina increases your character's capabilities. Increasing your capabilities is progression. Same goes for Adventure Rank. The vast majority of version 1 players have obtained AR60 long ago. What was the reason for increasing adventure rank? To raise the world level. Why would you want to raise the world level? To get stronger artifacts and more materials. Stronger artifacts means what? Progression. Progression affects every aspect of a video game since it's the fundamental reason why we play them. Even in games where there is no practical end goal, like Minecraft, the game is continuously updated with content that facilitates progression. In 1.4, they introduced the Wither Boss. To incentivize actually taking him down, they made him drop the Nether Star, which can be used to make a beacon for a wide assortment of quality of life enhancements for builders and explorers alike. In 1.9, they expanded on the end dimension by adding end cities, and to incentivize exploring those cities, they brought Elytras to give us better transportation. In 1.11, they added Woodland Mansions. Why would you want to look for them for Totems of Undying? Minecraft is an open-ended sandbox game that doesn't even require you to play the game in that specific way, yet even Mojang, or Mojang, I don't remember, understands the importance of progression. Content alone does not keep a player engaged and attached to a game. There has to be reasons to partake in that content, something the player can holistically work towards. The easiest and most universal way to do that is to add an element of gameplay progression. Story progression is only valued and appreciated by story-driven players. Area progression is only valued and appreciated by completionists. Gameplay progression is valued and appreciated by literally everyone who's ever picked up a video game since that's the whole point. Actually, forget video games. Progression drives their motivation to do anything. People get bored of stories, movies, animes, whatever, if there's no tangible progression, be it character development or plot enhancement. Good stories have well-paced, well-detailed progression, just like how good games have well-paced, well-detailed progression of its gameplay, mechanics, characters, etc. It's true that in the long run, after years and years of being in service, eventually all that progression will result in a game that has been powered and feature crap, which will inevitably lead to a faction of players wishing for the old days when times were simpler. But such is the nature of video games. Old school RuneScape, WoW Classic, pre-Big Bang MapleStory private servers, those nostalgia servers would never have been a thing if the regular versions didn't progress. Players would have gotten bored of those games instead of being loyal to them for decades. Mihoyo has to add more progression to Genshin. Something. Anything. Level 100, AR70, a new elemental skill, a new ascension passes, something to make the game feel different today than when it came out back in 2020. Every game has progression, regardless of genre. Pokemon added Steel and Dark type in Generation 2, introduced abilities in Gen 3, Physical Special Split in Gen 4, plus evolutions for old Pokemon. Gen 6 had Fairy types and Mega Evolutions, Gen 7 had Z moves, Gen 8 had Dynamax. Yu-Gi-Oh! The trading card game didn't just make new cards, they made new types of cards, fusions, synchros, Xyz, pendulums, link monsters, doesn't matter the platform, system, whether digital or tabletop. There isn't a single game that survives without structural and mechanical progression. Genshin Impact is rich, filthy rich with potential to be one of the best games to ever exist and revolutionize the gacha industry more than it already has, which makes it once again all the more frustrating when it fails to tap into that potential. I want this game to last, but for it to survive and continue to bring in more players, it can't keep doing the same sh** over and over and expect different results. The game hasn't evolved in over 3 years, it's the same exact experience as it was from 2020 to now almost 2024. Anyways, this can be it for today. Apologies for sounding kind of ranty in this video, it was something I want to talk about after having a conversation with a few Genshin creators. In any case, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below whether you agree or disagree with my points. As always, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you left a like and subscribed. 
Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at VarsVam, join my Discord server, and check out my other discussion videos if you haven't yet, especially the burnout episode. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.